Good evening, good evening everyone. How are you tonight? Be sure and let me know where you're from. Comment, make some comments so I know. I know YouTube is good. If you're on Facebook watching, uh, be sure and let me know that you can hear me and see me. Okay. All right. Hopefully everyone's doing well. We're in a heat wave here, so it's extremely, extremely hot. Uh, 100 with 110 degree heat indexes here in the Fort Worth, Texas area. Not fun. Hey Bobby, thanks for joining. Eddie. Okay, we're going to give it just a few minutes and... Uh, all right, now I'm seeing comments on Facebook. Yay, we're working tonight. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> hey, Nancy. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Hey, Julie. Okay, so tonight I'm going to talk about brushes, brush care, different hairs of brushes. I've done this before, but every time I do it, I grab different brushes and hopefully um, you learn something. That's what we're here for, right? 65 degrees. Oh my goodness, I would love that. That's like my optimum temperature. Hey Renee, hey Ann, Gail, thanks for joining. That would be nice. Hey Miss Carolyn, your heat index was 117. Yeah, you're south of me, so that doesn't surprise me. That's crazy. Hey Linda, thanks for joining. All right, so I'm going to uh, turn the camera and get started. Um, I do want to real quick say that um, I picked two winners from last week. Hey everybody, everyone's starting to jump on. Christina, Patty, Jan, Donna, awesome. Donna, your mug went out, so watch for it in the mail. Um, I picked two people for downloadable packets. Um, if you do ceramics or you do glass, whichever, um, you can pick um, any of my class in a bags or technique packets, 1250 and under, and I will email them over to you. So the first winner is K Leonard, L-E-N-A-R-D. K. Leonard, so you've won a Technique packet, and then Ginger, and I always say your name wrong, so I apologize, Anna Charo, A-N-N-I-C-C-H-A-R-I-O, it's a long one, I butcher it every time, so Ginger and K, you are winners, okay? My voice sounds better, um, I'm a little hoarse still from talking all weekend. I taught five classes from Friday night to uh, Sunday afternoon, evening. So anyway, Bobby, Springfield, Missouri. Bobby, I used to live in Springfield. Uh, we were, that's kind of my hotel, hometown. Kansas City is my hometown, but we lived there for a while. I really, that's where I thought we would retire to. So maybe someday, maybe someday. All right, so congratulations to the winners and let me turn the camera and let's get started while all the equipment is working, okay? All right. So, I am by myself, so bear with me. I do wanna make one announcement real quick. This is um, the Purple Poppy glass uh, piece that I'm doing this Saturday as a webinar. You still can sign up. Um, today, if you are signed up and you haven't checked your email, you should have a prep video and a supply list in your email, okay? So this is what we're going to do, and then we're going to do a nightlight, um, butterflies, and a little necklace hydrangea. So this is the main focus point for the webinar. It's a three-hour class, Saturday from 2 to 5 uh, Central Standard Time, okay? And I know some of you, I didn't have a light last time, but I want to... I don't know if I can turn this light off so you can kind of see. It's, I put twinkle lights. So this is what you do with those panels, which you could do a panel even um, on Saturday. So you Velcro these on. I, don't, I really don't want to take it off, but you can kind of see the Velcro is behind. You see it in there. And these are just little fairy lights. So you can switch them out for seasons or room or whatever you want to do which is kind of cool so that's what I do with those and there's um, a couple of different um, packets on the website for that okay so let's talk brushes so there are Taclon brushes which are I call them the yellow hair ones let me zoom in 
okay? Um, they're like, they're a man-made bristle, okay? So they're, they're like got a plastic coating. So they hold acrylics really, really well. As far as our fired product, it tends to slide off, but there are some brushes that we wouldn't be able to afford, and this is one of them, if we made it in a sable, um, because it is a trio. I think you can kind of see that there. It's like a triangle, so it has three sides. So you got two sides in the back. Great for leaves, seaweed, um, poinsettia petals. And then you have the rake brushes, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Um, they are short and long, so rake or comb brushes, they can be referred to. And do you see on the ends, you can kind of see through the hairs. It's got some hairs that are here and some that are long. So that is what a comb or a rake brush is. Good evening, everyone that's joining. TJ, Marlene, Mar, excuse me, Mary Ann. I can't read. I'm trying to read both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Hey, Miss Ruth, thanks for joining. Thanks for sharing with your group out there. Um, you know, everybody teaches differently, but hopefully this will give you some good basic information so you know what to choose uh, when you're trying to find a brush for whatever job you're wanting to do. Um, there are different, this is also a Taclon or synthetic. Um, it's just a different hair. This is one of our golden onyx. That's why it's a little more golden brown on the tips. So there's different grades, just like anything out there. Um, you get what you pay for. That's the God honest truth, okay? Um, if you go to the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store, and you buy a brush from there, you're probably not going to get a quality brush, right? Everybody agree with that? So think about that when you're, you know, if, if you're not worried about what you're doing or if it's for kids or something, that's a different story. But if you make an investment in your brushes, they will last you. And if you take care of them and uh, clean them properly, okay? So when we paint on our glass, this is our glass brush. This is the one that we do. It's a Taclon brush um, and all the product falls off and you flood the color on. That's what we want, okay? Now, when you're painting with ceramics or even your acrylics, um, there's a few acrylic people um, higher end that buy sable brushes. Um, I don't think as much as there used to be when it was really, really big. Um, these are Kalinske brushes. The hair in the Kalinskis are like the hair on your head okay they're natural hair they hold the moisture hold the product okay so when i say moisture i'm talking water or product is the moisture okay so that's a sable brush versus this one's easier to see so see so you've got kind of a yellow hair and then this is brown like the hair on your head okay hey janet thanks for joining Okay, so hopefully that explains um, that. Hey, Tisa. Hey, Stacy. So these are Taclon. They're mostly the yellow hair. And then your sables are the brown ones. Um, natural hair refers to a sable also. Kalinsky, if you, if you get a brush, and I don't even know that I have one here, that just says sable on it, it is a cheaper sable okay I'm not gonna pick on the this is so this is a sable brush it's a natural hair but this is a Kalinsky Nash natural hair on the square shader there okay the difference is the Kalinsky the hairs are dressed they're treated differently refined where your sable is a natural but it may not be as fine-tuned think of it that way okay hopefully that helps um, is there anything wrong with it? No, there isn't. But if you want really, really fine points and sharp edges, then your Kalinsky is a better brush to get. So you invest in what you're painting. Um, that way you always have them. Okay, so Kalinsky, they can come in. This is referred to as a flat or a square shader in case you don't know that. I'm going to talk as if you don't know anything. And if I, you know it, I'm not saying you don't know it. It's just I want to make sure that 
everyone is aware and different name everybody calls things different names if you have a square shader as what I refer to them as and it's shorter hair maybe only that long those are called brights I don't have any out here because I personally don't care for them because they don't hold as much product okay so it would just be shorter hair and it would be considered a bright so a flap or a square shader okay hey Janet Pat thanks for joining I'm trying I am by myself so I'm trying to um, check all the chat on both ends Lori Carol joined us thank you um, you've got liners my series um, I don't even remember when it was probably 10 years ago I bought color brush and um, yeah it's probably been that long the 5100s are liner brushes now when a brush is dry do you see how that's kind of bushy and you're saying well that's not a good brush well it doesn't look like that when it's new okay when it's new it usually has a protective cap on it don't put these back on they're for shipping purposes only you'll end up getting a hair cattywampus and then you'll have to cut it off okay not a good not a good thing so your brushes come these are new ones with those caps on them now I want I brought this one out because I want can you see I'm not sure you can see that can you see that hair that's like right here so somebody took the cap off tried to shove it back on and messed it up and that happens at the shows um, people will walk by and they're like pull it off and then they take and they go like this they go like that don't do that to a brush when you see it it has sizing in it which is like a soap to harden it into one shape and then they put the cap on it okay when you go like that you possibly could be breaking some of the hairs you need to just swish it in water so don't don't do it at the shows okay usually they have samples you can look at um, but don't do that I don't care where you're at buying them okay you don't know any of this <laughs> Barbie that's good that's okay that's what you're here for you're here to learn um, and if I say something you don't understand then definitely ask I still don't know if you can see that you can kind of see it right there that hair it's on the top side so what I would have to do to correct that if, it, if I were at home you can do one of two things Dove soap is great um, it's soft on your skin so think of it as soft on your brushes okay I'm gonna wet this brush and then I can run it through the soap this is how you're gonna clean your brushes also but we'll talk about that so you could literally put that soap in there you can also put um, your own shampoo or conditioner in there and just shape it and then you can lay this in the freezer and it will bring it all back together more than likely once in a while someone's jammed it down and it doesn't but because it's got that soap it'll kind of make that coating that was on there to begin with and then you can just lay it flat to dry don't ever stand your brushes up to dry after you've cleaned them okay because all the water runs down into the ferrule okay so this is the ferrule the ferrule is either silver or gold most of the time um, so the water runs down into here where it connects it will loosen the glue if it's a wood handle which most I think 99% of mine are um, and they've got a lacquer on top of the wood it could cause the lacquer to crack the wood swells retracts and then your um, ferrule loosens up and comes off okay now if it's not crimped and when I say crimped these are crimp marks you see those little it's like two little lines across there I don't know if there's another one that shows it better okay so we crimp the brushes on pretty tight um, a lot of stuff is coming in from overseas okay and they're doing it so fast that they're not crimping uh, well enough that it's staying on and if you have a plastic handle it's hard to crimp onto plastic that's why they used wood for so long so keep that in mind if you have a, a something that comes loose it gets wobbly you can stick a drop of super glue in there um, I wouldn't crimp it too much with like pliers or anything this is an actual machine that has like a special 
number size wise depending on the size of the the uh, head that it's laid down in there and then another one comes down on it like a guillotine almost and it crimps it in place okay so if you push this with pliers you're going to flatten that ferrule which is the metal part and it could distort the shape of the bristles on the end okay so keep that in mind when you're trying to fix things i would rather that you um, if you ever have one of mine that something happens uh, it falls off i back my brushes you send them back to me and i send you another one um, but just keep that in mind when you're trying to fix something okay that's something to be aware of hopefully that all makes sense this is, I'm just going to hold it over there. This is a stubby brush of ours. Um, it is a mongoose hair. So that is a natural hair, different than what the Kalinske is. Here's a better, a bigger one that you can see. Okay. So different hairs, but still a natural hair. Okay. This is considered a filbert shape or a cat's tongue. See how it has that oval at the end? this also has an oval it's dry let me put it in some water so you can see it better and this one's used too i ab use and abuse so it is a cat's tongue also or like i said these are also called filbert just so you're aware of what that shape is called if you're looking for it okay or if someone refers to it on a supply list for a class you're taking whatever okay so that is a filbert. We talked about the combs, the wedges. So you've got liners, you've got squares, you've got rounds. Okay, so for instance, these are two different rounds. And anytime a brush is dry, it's bushy. Okay, when our hair is dry, you know, think of it as uh, frizzy hair. But when you put it in water, look at that. See how it comes back to a nice point? Oh, I didn't turn that light back on that might make a difference okay so it's got a nice point on it when it's wet so don't look at a brush when it's dry and say oh that's a terrible brush like for instance see that guy there he's all bushy but watch what happens when I put it in the water he's fine okay so hopefully that helps um, don't use when you're cleaning your brushes don't use hot hot water um, you wouldn't do that you know to yourself not scalding okay warm water and then like i said this is uh, dove ivory soap these are those little soap containers that you can get at walmart dollar store and when you're cleaning them just dampen your brush clean you know swish it in your water bowl to get rid of the product and then just brush it back and forth on the soap and then you can go to your hand and see if there's anything in there so I'm going to put red, I've got some red over here, I'm going to put some red in the brush and I'm just going to go swish it in my water bowl and now I'm going to go like this and put, now I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little bit of red coming, whoops, nope, right there, there's a little bit of red and when I go to my hand, I'm. you don't want to distort the brush, you wouldn't go down because that's going to damage the hairs you're not it needs to be treated in the same shape that it's in don't don't work against it so you would just go back and forth rinse it again come over here and see if there's any color that bleeds out now let's put some color in here so you can kind of see so if it's bleeding color then you know when I say bleeding there's color coming off on me um, you know that it's dirty and you need to swish it again um, it's there's sometimes with the tacklon brushes you can rake them a little bit on your water bowl if you have one of the ridges in the bottom but be really careful um, you wouldn't go back and forth you would go one direction you never do that to your sable or natural hair brushes because it would be taking um, it'd be like taking yourself somebody takes you outside hangs you upside down and puts your hair on the sidewalk what is it going to do it's going to give you split ends same thing's going to happen if you rake it across the bottom of a water bowl okay welcome robin thanks for joining so ivory dove soap anything that you would you know use on your body that's soft that's what you want to use to clean um, you can also use there's different um, 
companies out there with brush cleaners. This is a plaid uh, brush plus. Um, if you're a ceramic person, Mako used to have a really, really good brush cleaner. Um, there's all different ones that are in little uh, round compact kind of things that are good too. I can't think of the names of them right now. But just don't. Uh, never use Dawn detergent. Okay. Dawn is a degreaser and it will help loosen the glue that's in the ferrule. And uh, I'll sell you another brush because it's going to fall off. Okay. The hairs are going to fall out. It's great for ducks, but you don't want to do it um, on your brushes. Okay. Now there's different rounds out there. I'm going to move this so you can see. There's different rounds. This is my, the pink handle, this is my Bavarian round. And what that means for anybody that buys these is it has more of a rounded point versus a sharp point. Do you see that black handle one? So it's easier for a beginner to learn to do comma strokes with the Bavarian round, which is our 500 series. Uh, there's a few sizes. You'll have to just check and see uh, what is available on the website. Okay. And then um, this is just a regular round, the black handle, which is the number two. So it has more of a point on it. Okay. This is, and this one too, if I remember correctly, just different handles because of different times. These are what's called spotters, or I call them berry brushes. And I'll demonstrate these in a minute, okay? So there's different types of rounds. You wouldn't buy this short hair round to do a comma stroke with because you're not going to get very far, first of all. And you're not going to get a point that you're going to get with those two, okay? So really investigate what you're purchasing and what you're wanting to do with it. And if you don't know, send me a picture. I'll be happy to um, see what I can do to help, okay? This one is a tack one also. So and then you've got liners. This is a 5100 Klinsky and number four. 5100 is a script liner. So it's going to be longer. And this is one. This is the 5150. So it's even longer. It's a smidge longer. So we got liner and script liner. And then we have the shorter ones. I thought I had one out here. Yes, I don't. The... <clears throat> number two okay so different lengths of hairs can you see that let me get them side by side it's hard to get they want to roll around <clears throat> and i apologize my voice because like i said i talked all weekend and then we had all that lovely weather in tulsa uh, the shop owner did get um, electricity back this morning finally uh, but there's tons of people still that whole storm system that went through 100 mile hour winds huddled down in the bathroom it was all kinds of fun okay so what happens with your um, Taclon liners a lot of times especially with acrylics the color builds up down here by the ferrule and it's harder to get out okay if you ever have a brush the I'm telling you the soap that works or the brush cleaner and then you shape it back into place you can lay it put your shampoo your conditioner in it it doesn't matter if it's sable or uh, tack one put that conditioner in there and shape it get it back to its original shape lay it in the freezer for a couple hours and then rinse it in water swish it in your water basin when you're ready to use it and that will help train that another thing that you can do to clean your tack one brushes um, this is tack one only Okay, everybody understand this is tack one only. You could take like a little, let's assume this cup was uh, taller. You could put like a half an inch. No, you don't want to go up to where your uh, wood or up, you know, past the ferrule. But put you half an inch to an inch of alcohol, rubbing alcohol or vodka if you want to waste it um, in there and let it soak. And you'll see the color just come out. Now, anytime you do that, you're stripping the hairs because that's pretty harsh. So you definitely need to put some conditioner back in here, even if it's a tack one, um, and then you can help shape it also, put it in the freezer. But don't leave it in there too long and don't go up past your ferrule when you're soaking a brush. Finding gas, yeah, Patty. 
I had to drive 45 minutes west of Tulsa to a turnpike, uh, the island, to find gas. I was almost, I was 80 miles from empty. I, w I should have filled up the day before and just didn't think about it. So I know there's still a lot of people, and it was a madhouse. People were like fighting for the pumps. There was probably 50 semis just parked. I'm sure it's because they couldn't get gas anywhere. Sorry, I had to have a drink. Okay, so only do tack one brushes in the alcohol or vodka. Don't do that to these guys, to your natural hairbrushes, okay? My Sumi brushes are a black squirrel hair, which is a natural hair. So clean with your soap. Don't use hot water, warm water, okay? And then, like I said, you can just check it on your hand to make sure. My big thing is, and if you've, if you've watched any of my videos, once I rinse my brush, I lay it down on the paper towel. So let me put some red in here, and I'm going to go rinse it. And then I always go like that. Oh, looky there. I haven't cleaned my brush. So I'm going to swish it again in my water bowl and do it again. And I'm turning it one side and then the other side and do it again until you don't see color in there. Okay? Don't just swish it and lay it down because I guarantee you it's not clean. Okay? Your power came back on this morning, Janet. That's great. I mean, I know there's, and the heat is just awful to not have any kind of power. And I'm sure everybody lost um, food too. Hi, Miss Pat. Hi, Jen. What are the blue tabs on my brushes? Um, those we call flags. So as I'm doing a stroke in a minute, I want you to watch that flag, how it moves. That's going to tell you how my brush is moving. Thank you for asking that, Jen. Good evening from Buffalo. Hey there. Hey, Lori. Hey, Carol. Okay. So natural hair brushes. Treat them like the hair on your head. Okay. Um, if you have a good brush, like I said, it will come back when it's wet and you blot it. Let me move these out of the way. You will have a nice chisel. This is called the chisel edge. This is the flat. You would never use this brush like this because you're going to ruin the bristles. You're, you're putting them in a shape that they weren't meant for. They've been crimped flat, so you use them as a flat. Now, you can still turn and make motions with it, but you don't go against what the ferrule has already done for you. Okay, that's why it's made that way. Um, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so that's, so just the difference, like I said, the Bavarian rounds, um, they may, I think they have black handles now. They just don't have quite the point. They're easier to do um, as far as common strokes. And then your Kalinske regular rounds have more of a point to them. All right, any questions about just that type of thing? Brushes itself, not necessarily brush strokes. Thank you. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I mean, I'm used to tornadoes down here, but um, yeah, we were in the bathroom for an hour the other night. <laughs> it was crazy. And there was no power even the next morning. I had to take a shower and then go to the shop and do blow dry my hair and curl my hair. It was crazy. So, all right. So let's look here. I just did these real quick. Let me back back off since we're done with that. Um, with this large square shader. So this is like a 14 square shader. Again, it's crimped flat. These here are the crimps. So when somebody says, oh, it, it just didn't get crimped well, these two lines, it's like a double crimp. It's smashing it on to the wood itself. Okay. And you can see that it's flat. So you wouldn't use it necessarily like this. It's meant to be used as a flat or a square shader is what I refer to it as. Okay. All right. Let's check for questions real quick and then I'll do some strokes. Okay. All right. So let's get some color out. I'm just going to demonstrate with some color concentrates, which um, is for our ceramics and glass. So I've got 112 and 122, not that color makes any difference. Um, I usually load with the light and then corner load in the dark. Okay, so when I load, I push that color up against the well 
and let's do, um, I'm going to turn on the, nope, wrong one, sorry, this one. So you can see the palette down here. Okay, so fully loaded, and then I can shape it. Now I'm not really taking a lot of product off, except for at that end. And you can see that it's still got a nice chisel. The other thing is, if you're going to be corner loading to do different strokes and put two colors on, um, I keep the writing of the brush towards me so that I will always corner load in the same corner. No more than half the distance, usually a third, sometimes we say like 13 hairs, blend quickly, blend, 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 flip it over, color next to color, blend, 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 blend. And I will load twice on my first load. You see how quick I'm doing that? If you go really slow, really slow, it doesn't really do anything. What you're trying to do is push that color across so that you have a gradient from light to dark across. Or excuse me, dark to light. So it should fade from one color to the other, whatever your colors are, okay? The other thing is when you're um, loading two colors on the brush, you want to make sure both of those colors are the same consistency. Traditionally, in the ceramic industry, um, your darker colors are thicker, so you may need to add a drop of water to thin them down. If they're not the same consistency, you're not going to get a good load. And that can be for anything you're doing. It doesn't matter what products you're using. Donna says she's used a flat for daisy strokes. What should, you know, okay. And I understand that. And you're saying, um, we're not going to go into all that detail, but you're saying that you've went like this with it. And you can, but I'm saying don't traditionally jam it down against itself. I personally like a round brush for a daisy. But you, um, any brush you can make do different things. So um, it, it's just, you know, everybody teaches different, Donna. You know, and take a little bit from each person and... Um, you'll find what you like. That's the best. I mean, I encourage everybody to take classes from other people because I may say something and you don't understand it. And then some, you're in another class and somebody says something and it's like, Oh, the light bulb moment. Ah, that's what she was talking about. So it's all in how we communicate it. It may make sense to you what I say versus someone else. Okay. So Lori says she would like to make, um, Hold on, I gotta go back to the comma strokes. I'm fairly new at one stroke painting, trying to get back into it from years ago. Um, I like round brushes. Now, you're talking one stroke. One stroke is acrylic, okay? So you would be using like the Golden Onyx, which is our 2000 series, and this is a round, okay? And I can, this is a new one, but that's okay. I don't have one of my own out here. So I'm going to grab. And these colors are a lot thinner than what your acrylics are. If you're an acrylic person. Okay. So load it. See how I'm pulling it against the palette to get it shaped to a point. And then you want to press down to fan it out. Pull, pull, lift, 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 lift to a point. Okay. Now for you to really see that, let's go side camera. And I'm going to move over here. So this is a round brush. Okay. So when so you're not straight up on the handle. Slightly cocked back on the handle is the best. I like to put my pinky down to anchor myself. Press to fan it out to get the size that you want. Pull, 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 and lift. Now, what I need to do, I've told this on a couple other ones, these little nibs on your palettes, if you lay your brush there, it won't roll. Okay. And somebody asked what my flags were. And this brush doesn't have a flag. So I'm going to add it so you can see what's happening. All right. I'm going to lay this one here. So fully load. And let's watch this again. Ready? So watch the flag. Okay, Lori. Watch the flag. Because it's going to roll just a tiny bit in my hand. So press pull, 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 see the flag move. So as I'm rolling it to get back to a point, the flag will sometimes move. It just depends on what I'm doing. 
All right, I know a lot of you have been on my videos. I'm going to ask, what is a brush stroke? Who can tell me what a brush stroke is compiled of? What is a brush stroke? The first one that says it correctly that I see in either feed will win a pattern pack. Dagger, round, or flat? Or is it a dagger? A dagger is, a, you know what? I don't know that I have one out here. A dagger has a, um, it's like a slant. I did not bring one out. We're getting into specialty brushes there. All right, what is color? Patty Peterson, color, pressure, and motion. Ooh, almost a tie. <laughs> All right, so hold on. I need to write down names. <laughs> Patty better know it. She just had class. Color, and Cheryl, look at you. They were both in class. Good girls, I'm proud of you. <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay, so Cheryl and Patty. Pick out a pattern pack on my website, $12.50 or less, okay, and I will email you the PDF. Good to go. So, a brush stroke is color, pressure, and motion, okay? So, color, if you're loading it singly or if I'm going to go over here and tip, and the amount of pressure you put down will determine the size of that stroke, and the motion is how you're turning it, dragging it whatever you're doing with it okay so color pressure and motion and if those colors are not the same consistency you're not going to be able to load them properly because you'll keep going tip 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 into it and you're not going to get it because it's too thick if that happens to be the case so you can put very little pressure for a smaller stroke look at that this is a number eight round or you can make great big ones with it and this one needs a flag. I switched brushes. This other one um, that had that wacky hair on it that I showed you. Yeah, I'm not using that one. I don't like it. It wasn't behaving. That's why I have it in my stash. So color, pressure, and motion. Fully load with red. Tip in the yellow. Press, pull, lift, 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 lift. And come off. Did you see that flag move just a little bit? Okay, let's just do one so we can go. You can nestle those inside each other to create like leaves or different petals. Robin says she would have answered, but she didn't want to <laughs> because you already know. That's right. Thank you for letting somebody else uh, answer, Robin. You're sweet. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? color pressure and motion all right same thing on your square I'm rinsing my brush what am I gonna do I'm gonna blot it here and in my water bowl I usually have a dirty and a clean so and I'll just show you my really really dirty so I have one that's dirty and a cleaner one and a cleaner one okay so I'm gonna rinse it here first rinse it here second if I need a third there and that's how I clean my brushes it doesn't matter what I'm doing whether it's non-fired or fired, that's my go-to thing. And then wiping it out on my paper towel to make sure that I have cleaned it enough. Okay? And then as you're working on your piece, because I fully loaded in the yellow on this one and cornered in the red, okay, let's check and see how far that red is going across there. That's still pretty good. You can just re-corner the yellow, re-corner the red, don't rinse your brush don't waste your product you don't need to do that unless the red or whatever your second color is gets all the way across your brush then you're not going to be making that stroke that you want where you can see both colors and you need to rinse and start over blend 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 quickly flip it over red on red if you put it on top of here you're going to have red all the way across right okay so you can check your application just by pulling straight I'm going to corner, corner, and I'm staying out of that little red dab that's in my yellow. You can make a common stroke with this guy. I traditionally will hold down here where my ferrule meets the handle. 
um, if you hold too far back it's not as easy to control it there's some things you want to do with that that's uh, that's okay and if you get too far down you can't have control of it either you, just right there above where the ferrule and the handle meet is probably the best I find for me okay press pull lift Gail says that is part of a stroke correct and that's what I tell you in different things so if you wanted a comma stroke with this guy you would press down to get how large you want pull pull see how that just made the comma and the side camera hopefully you can see the amount of pressure so let's talk about pressure so the more pressure you put down if you're looking here at this camera how about um, let me do just side camera by itself how's that now you got it nice and big hopefully that will help so if you don't put very much pressure you'll just have a smaller stroke if you put more pressure you'll have a larger stroke okay so you can do different sizes with the same brush and if you learn on a larger brush it's easier to go to a smaller brush I find that with most of my students okay and I'm just gonna go back and corner corner blend 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 flip blend 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 all right so let's just do a straight if you were coming down the edge of something um, like I did on the that rose nightlight I did red just coming down the side and if I just need red I can just tip in red and go back because I've still got fresh color here okay does that make sense hopefully um, you can push away from you let's do let's do uh, what I call a wedge stroke so press slide and come off now Oh, you can't see the let me do a couple of them this way and then I'll turn on the other camera press pull lift lift this is what I call a wedge stroke and the best way they had to practice some of these over the weekend at class we had a lot of brush strokes in the class I was doing so I'm going to start in that V so here is my stem press and slide off so I say press towards your elbow slide off to your tummy press towards your elbow and what did I do looky there I flipped my brush over so what am I gonna do I'm gonna rinse it I get to talking and then I don't look okay so I'm just gonna blot the water out also I need to clean my palette because now my blending area is messed up because it's got red all the way across it and I'm gonna grab this red out of that yellow so fully load right into the brush towards me corner load no more than half blend 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 flip over red next to red and blend what do we do on the first load we load one more time to really work that color into the bristles of the brush now I'm gonna flip this over because I want red down towards where my stem is press pull and slide press pull and slide grab some more color press pull and slide okay now we're going to go back to side and overhead okay all right so what i want you to do is i want you to watch the flag as i'm doing it okay watch the flag it should not turn when you're doing a wedge stroke okay so it's facing I think you can see that press pull and slide press pull and slide and so many people want to go like this they want to hook the brush and I was joking with them at class that there's no hookers in the class you cannot do that you want to just press pull and slide off so color pressure and motion the motion is pressing down to how wide you want the stroke the motion is me just pulling towards my elbow however long I want to pull so let's do a really long one we'll be we'll exaggerate so if you're starting and you press 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 and then lift up on the chisel 
but my brush did not move as far as turn. Okay, so press, pull, 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 lift, and slide off. Does that make sense? You like the water tip. Oh, Elizabeth, you mean about dirty and clean? And I it just, you know, I have, I know some people never clean their water bowl. I have, it's just one of my things. I've always done that. Hey, Amanda. We got, hey, Vicki. Sandy, thanks for joining. Lori. All right, so hopefully that helps. Uh, are we still good on YouTube? Nobody's commenting over there. I'm just double checking. Just double checking. I'm reloading. So let's do, um, I think, I, I know I've done it multiple times for you guys. So if you want to do a flower, make the size of the flower you want. Make the center of your flower, however big you want it. Do a Y. Now you have two large sections. If you divide that section in half, this works for any flower, okay? It could be an oval. Here's your center. There's your Y. Divide. So let's say this one's going to be a daisy. What are you going to do? You're going to divide it again. So now you have perfect spacing for your petals. You can do regular petals. You might be doing like a sunflower or you want your petals to go out. So that's how you start. And you can keep dividing it down as small as you want. Okay. So that's just a fun little trick. Good on YouTube. Thank you, Teresa. Appreciate that. That's just a little trick that you can do. Okay. So I've still got the same load, yellow, corner, and red. And I can just press and come around which is just like an open, open C. You could wave it a little bit by pressing, 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 and come in for more of a ripple stroke or an M stroke, we call it. Okay. Or if I wanted to do this sunflower type, you can start on the flat and then watch the flag, watch the flag, and I'm turning and coming off. So let's do that one again since I told you late. Okay, and I'm, do you notice what I'm doing? I'm turning my piece. My piece is paper. Constantly turn so that it's comfortable. Okay, you can pull this stroke towards you. So you can start on the flat, press it in, pull, pull, watch the flag. It's turning, it's turning. Okay, and I'm coming off. Does that make sense, guys? Hopefully these are some tips that as you pick up a brush, you will um, think about these things, you know, that I'm saying. You can always come back and watch. Um, if you're on either platform, uh, be sure and like and share. And if you share, tag me and you get a chance to win a free packet or whatever I might be giving away. So I'm going to sneak one in here behind. I would have done it back the back pedals first. But you can see how you can just put it in there. Okay. Now we were talking about a daisy earlier. Yes, you can squish your brush and kind of do something there. But personally, I will go to the round. And I can still load. This one was damp from earlier. Normally you would wet your brush, blot out the moisture, and then get your product. So, move that out of the camera way. Press pull and lift. Retip because I know I've got enough yellow on there. Whatever goes on your brush last comes off first. So a lot of times you're able to just keep retipping because you still have a lot of your first product, but the last product is coming off first. So press, pull, lift. Watch that flag. It's turning, turning. So I'm slightly turning just a half a turn to bring everything back to a point. I'm going to reload with both of those and I'm going to have this all over me if I don't lay it down tip into the red now this is a little bit bigger one so what are we going to do we're going to put more pressure to fan it out pull pull lift 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 slightly turn and come in now I'm not trying to make anything pretty I'm just trying to show you what you're doing on the stroke that's all we're worried about tonight okay I reloaded with some yellow tipped in the red Press, pull, lift, lift, lift. 
Now, if you press pull and go like that, you're going to get uneven. You're not going to get a point. You've got to stop and think about it. Think of it this way. The airplane does not go to the end of the runway and stand straight up, does it? It comes off gradually, you hope, anyway, right? So your brush needs to do the same when it's coming off of whatever surface you're working on. So fully load, drag off to a point, tip. This is that Bavarian round, and this one is well used. I've used it for many, many years. Um, and as you use a brush, it tends to fray. And depending on the surface, you, on bisque, you tend to eat up your natural hair. A lot of times I will base coat with a white base so that it's softer on my brushes. So just another little tip. Press, pull, lift, lift to a point. Okay, let's go back just to overhead. Does that make sense? Yes? Watching on YouTube, okay. A lot of interference on Facebook, Lori. Sometimes there is, and I tried changing the settings last week and it totally kicked me off. So you may have to jump over to YouTube. But if you'll hit that like and share, I would appreciate it. That helps me get in front of more people and allows me to keep doing free videos for you. Okay, so let's do one more here. So depending on where I'm coming from, and of course this is a ceramic product, so it kind of beads up on here, but you get the idea. I'm not going to put acrylics in my good brushes. That, And that's the other thing that I did not say is if you're using fired product, whether it's glass enamels and the concentrates for your ceramics and you're firing it in the kiln, I have a dedicated set of brushes for that. And then I have brushes that I only use that are acrylics, a non-fired. And why do you do that? That's because most people do not wash their brush properly and they leave some of that in there. And then when you go to put it onto your piece you're putting in the kiln, if some of that comes off on your piece, it will fire away, it does, but it also will leave a, leave a blemish on your design. Okay, so you hear me swish one, swish two, and I swish number three. Okay, if I'm not clean, I'll go back to my cleanest and check it on my palette. Okay, all right, so hopefully that gives you some ideas about doing your own flowers, your own designs. Okay, so there's, um, you know, what I usually do is, I don't have a pencil right here, is I will take and if I'm on bisque, greenware, I'll just make my Y. Okay, now watch what happens. I'm going to go back to this big one so that you can see it. Blend, blend. So I'm going to center a petal. I'm going to do something like this here, okay? And I'm going to center my petal over my lines. And this is how I paint when I do it freehand and I don't have a pattern. So I'm going to start, see my stroke is going to be right there over that. So I'm going to press, pull, and slide off. Ray corner. I load practically for, I'm having to on paper for sure, but even on my wear, whatever it is, I usually load for each stroke so I have the same color value. Okay, so I'm going to center over that line, press, pull, and slide. Now I push those. Normally left-handed people push. As a teacher, you should be able to do both. And don't ask me to paint left-handed because I don't feel like it tonight. <laughs> but I can when I have someone in class. So let's pull this one towards ourselves. So we're going to have that line. And I didn't leave quite enough space for my center, so I should have at least said, oh, I want that much center. All right, I'm flipping my brush over, putting the red. So I'm going to press, pull, and slide. Okay, so there's your Y, right? Now what are you going to do? You're going to put one stroke in the middle of each of those open sections. So you did not have to trace a pattern. You did not have to draw it completely out. Press and slide. Grab some color press and slide and you've got a perfect five petal flower.
Okay, Bobby, yeah, she has her acrylic brushes separate from her ceramics. And I do too. Okay, for instance, like, here's all my acrylics in here. Well, not all of them. I have a brush fetish. I think the person with the most brushes gets into heaven first. <laughs> That's what I told my husband. That's why I wanted the brush company. No, I like to have a one-stop shop. If you're doing what I'm doing, you want to be able to go find those products. Okay, so there was that. You can do the same thing with your um, ruffly petals. Remember to leave your center open. Get some more color. So I can center it over this. So whatever my stroke might be, I'm centered over that one. And now I'm going to do it here. Wave it a little bit, a little bit of the M stroke. Those ladies that were in class last weekend are familiar with those. M stroke, ripple stroke. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do it on that other. So I'm going to center over it, press, press, and come up. I have a Y, correct? There's my Y. Now I'm going to fill it in. So press, 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 and we'll throw a fourth one in there. If you have a good brush, it will spring back. See how it bounces up? Press, press, and press. And what I was telling them over the weekend was when you're doing like a leaf, but isn't that cool how you can just make the Y, paint the Y, and then fill in? I mean, it's so easy. Is one coat good enough, Lori is asking, um, for ceramics? It, it is good enough if you want it to be, um, these are translucent underglazes, okay? So they are translucent, transparent. If you want it heavier with color, Lori, I would do your light color. So I would come in with the yellow, do the strokes, and then come back with yellow and red. And that's going to ensure that it's going to be a little bit stronger and you've got a good base on there, especially if you feel like you're pulling it off. But when you're doing a one stroke, which this product is considered a one stroke, a translucent underglaze, one stroke, easy stroke type product, then usually it's one stroke. It just really depends on the technique. But if you're doing brush strokes, yes, one stroke is good. The why was a game changer, Patty said. It is. I mean, like I said, you're going to find different teachers teach differently and something is going to click and it just makes it easier for you. So take those classes and learn from all different types of people. Okay, so here's my leaf. So I'm going to put the dark to the center vein and I'm going to press and come up. This is called a closed C stroke. Okay, even if you have to do them individually until you get it together. So I pull the left, I turn it around, this is a leaf, and I'm going to turn my red toward, to the center and I'm going to push it down. So I'm going to press and lift, press and lift press and lift, press and come off. The yellow side is following the outside of my leaf. The red stays on the center vein. So you have to pivot as you're coming around and coming off. Hopefully that makes sense. And it takes practice. These girls that were, we practiced for a long time. See if I'm just doing just pressure, you can just do it that way if you don't want to do the ripply, okay? Or you can just do one. That works too. Thank you, Miss Teresa. Beautiful. It's just doodling. Doodling. It's not really anything. Do you want to learn a rosebud? Want to learn a rosebud? Yes? Okay. What time are we? 8.30. Okay, we've been on an hour, so we'll wrap it up in just a minute. Alright, so a rosebud is a combination of a closed C. So press, fan it out, and come off. That's a closed C. And let me show you. The bottom of the rosebud is an open C. Do you see the C right there? Okay. So let's combine them. So press, fan it out, depending on the size. And like I said, I'm using a really large brush just so you guys can see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to scoop the next one press, pull, and come off. 
and I've got my paper at an angle so it's not really press fan see that and you can pull some wedge strokes in around it you could do from the outside in with your strokes instead of the inside out see the difference in that and that one more of a pinwheel so there's different ways don't hesitate to um, just experiment with different things if you start seeing like here you can see the white paper right there that's what I call dragging um, so you need to load more product so that you don't do that press pull and lift and you need to say it to yourself and you will do it you couldn't see it until you the rosebud is that what you're talking about Teresa where I added the wedges here let me tear this one off so let me load some more product this is an older one gosh I did this years ago anybody in the ceramic industry knows Mr. David Hoff and uh, this is one of the strokes that he is famous for is his roses so you know there's your stem right and now if you want see there's that little leaf stroke and then angle it out a little bit more and then come in see I'm constantly turning press and slide up against it this is just a, a toll type more color blend blend and you can add even you know you can come in I'm flipping okay so I went this way flip my brush over and I'm gonna go this way and then you can just slide one across the bottom isn't that cool alright any questions let me get to Facebook and check hey Miss Angela <laughs> Bert's niece is on how are you thank you Linda all right so let's switch and do some greens real quick love the rose it's kind of fun it does take practice um, just like you know anything does the more you practice my girls uh, we were just talking about it this weekend you know they used to say we I want you to paint my eyes for me when we were doing acrylics way back when and they said but you're so good at it and I said you know why I'm good at it because you pay me to practice that's why I'm good at it so did you notice I, I well, you couldn't see it but I'm still coming over and I'm um, blotting my brush on my paper towel so that I can I gotta get my yellow out of here hold on I'm gonna switch to green so you can see the leaves writing the brush towards you corner load no more than half blend 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 flip blend 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 I'm going to grab a little bit more light. So if I wanted to just do a leaf, doing just a wedge stroke leaf, you know, and you've got your stem here. Or if you were doing one of the other leaves, so see that stays in the middle, and I'm pivoting as I go around. Flip it flip my brush over and then I can pull in a stem great strawberry leaves rose leaves it's my favorite leaf it does take practice I'm gonna add some red I'm gonna put a little bit of red on that light corner and this time I blended that one I'm not gonna blend this one so if you wanted to have a little bit of your rose color like a blush on your leaf you could do that okay 
what else? We got any more questions? Hey, Miss Margie, how are you? Oh, you're in Costa Rica and you're watching. I hope it's going well over there with your charity work. That's awesome. I bet you're hot. It's probably as hot as it is here. Linda uh, says she likes the way I explain and break it down. Helps us remember. I, it really does. And, you know, I did that for myself. So hopefully, I know somebody else had said one time, it makes it seem like you can do it, not just me. You know? And it does, you need to hear different ways to do something. Okay? So, what? I mean, even if you were making grass, you can still, you know, pull in and do longer strokes. But I'm not going against the, the way the brush is made really harshly. That, I guess, would be my uh, point to make. Just don't abuse it. Just like you don't want to abuse your hair. You need to go. You're welcome, Teresa. See you next time, okay? All right, anybody else got anything they want to see again before I jump off? I'm just going to sit here and do some wedge. So press, slide toward your elbow, pull off at your tummy. Watch the flag. The flag is not going to move. Press, pull, and slide. And when you say it, don't go real fast because you get a real crappy stroke. you got to stop and think about what you're doing, what direction. And 90% of the time, I pull my strokes towards myself. Okay? Um, trying to think of what else I can... So, you could do... I mean, even if you were doing like a, a little pod or something, you could, you know, use that closed C-stroke motion. So, the closed is press pivot the brush if you watch that little flag and even though my colors are different but this is the same this is a rose and now you make that C stroke so do you see the C there the other one that's a closed C and the other one is an open C okay all right guys um, you know your liner brush your comma strokes you just need to practice with the amount of pressure. The more pressure, again, what is a brush stroke? Somebody tell me, what is a brush stroke made of? Who can tell me? I'm gonna grab a little bit of the light green, a little bit of the dark, and I'm gonna add some water to thin it down. Okay, and you can just come in here. You stay up, I'm gonna tilt this so you can see. Stay up on the tippy toes when you apply pressure, you get fatter lines. And when you go into the curl, you need to make sure you're on the tippy toe. Okay, just on the tip of the brush. Because that is going to allow, so I can press, but I'm going to lift up as I turn. And I'm doing this in real slow motion, so it makes it even harder to do. Heading home tomorrow. Miserably hot. Oh, bless you. Safe travels, my friend. Color, pressure, and motion. Very good, Janet, Carolyn. Awesome. You are learning, see? All right, Jeannie, Donna. Yay, you guys are learning. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so just like I said, just... And you can go on and on and on forever. If you can't make the curls for little tendrils, then just, if you're coming off of something, just give it a big wave. And it simulates the same thing, and you don't have to know... Um, a lot about it. Oh, I know what I want to show you real quick. Let's get some black out. If you want to hang on for two seconds, I want to show you you can um, float color. I got color on my finger. Hold on. Um, So, if I were doing that Y, and that's what I'll do a lot. That's exactly what I'll do. And let me grab a 10, yeah, 10 square shader. What? Okay, so, I don't know that I can get my water bowl over here where you can see it. Uh, I can back the camera off. All right, here we go. So you don't have to necessarily do color, everything color. So I'm going to water load my brush, 
I'm going to drag it off, turn my brush up, drag it off again, riding the brush towards me. I'm going to corner in the black. So I've only got water and black, right? So depending on how you want to do this, you can still do that same stroke. I'm going to rinse, water load, drag off, corner right into the brush towards me. You guys got to wait for it. Um, so I'm still doing that M and wiggle stroke. Doesn't look like much now. I think I've got enough water. I can just add color. Okay. Just wait till I show you what this is going to do. This is a fun. So I'm filling in my Y, turning my paper. Okay. Getting the black out. Making sure it's out. And if you always, when you're doing something like this, if you continually make sure that writing the brush is towards you, you will always have black on that corner and you don't have to worry about getting it on the wrong side. Right? Alright, so I'm going to thin down some black. This is the 3600 uh, number two liner. And you can come in here. Turn my piece. Constantly turning. I'm grabbing more color. You can even come back and put in some little turn backs if you want. And then you can add your center with just some dots with the tip of the brush. And then if this was your stem, I'm going to set that brush there, water load, drag off to a point, blend, and now I'm going to do that leaf. But this is more of a, like a watercolor flip over. little too much there on the end but get the idea go back to the liner pull in your stem isn't that cool you can even kind of you could even come back and add you know more layers out here if you wanted I mean there's endless possibilities constantly turn your piece. That I can't stress that enough. Very cool, Patty says. Thank you. <laughs> it's uh it's fun. Thank you, Miss Robin. I'm swishing clean. Removing the excess water, corner load. Let's do a leaf going the opposite way this time. So putting the dark to the outside, okay? You may want it like that instead. Flip my brush over and then I can pull in. And then you can come in and do your detail if you want it or you can just leave it very soft. So that would be kind of a watercolory way to do it. You could do it with any color, uh, monochromatic, meaning all in the same color. Kind of fun, huh? I tell you what, should I ask again the same question? Thank you, Miss Doris. Hey, Kimberly. So flippin' awesome, she says. Okay, that would be great. A tattoo. <laughs> Angela. <laughs> okay, did you want me to send it to you? Take a screenshot of it. and you, If you get a tattoo of my painting, that would be absolutely awesome. That would be fun. <laughs> All right, I am going to sign this. And the first person that tells me what a brush stroke is, I will send you this piece of paper. What is a brush stroke? B. 
be signed and dated. All right. What is a brush stroke? Hey, Kamal. How are you? You love the control of the paintbrush. I've been doing this for 30, probably 38 years total. My oldest son is 36, so I was doing brush strokes before he was born. Donna Jansen. Donna Jansen. I just sent your package, girlfriend. <laughs> Are you coming to convention? I'll bring it to you at convention. <laughs> okay. So Donna Jansen wins this one. Okay. All right. I'm teaching you. You guys are getting it. All right. Let me switch back. You guys are great. Great, great, great. I love showing you new tricks and things. Hopefully you learned a lot. And we make it fun. And you'll, you want to learn, you know, when you make it fun. So color, pressure, and motion. So whether you got one color, two colors, three, four, whatever, the amount of pressure will determine the size of the stroke. And the motion is the comma or pull or push. That is the motion. Okay. All right, guys. All right, Donna, you let me know. I can always stick it in an envelope. It has to dry, of course, because it's not right. Maybe I'll paint another one uh, with acrylics for you. Okay. Yes, color, pressure, and motion. Okay. All right, guys, um, again, if you are one of my glassies and you want to do the purple poppy, that's Saturday's webinar. You can also learn a lot of things and use it on ceramics. Um, so it's $29.95, three-hour class, two to five central time on Saturday. All right, you're welcome, guys. Anyone else experience disruption? It, usually YouTube is better. Facebook has been making so many changes. I couldn't even do half the invites that I normally do. So it's it's just, I don't know. They're going to make me want to go straight to YouTube again. So, all right. Thank you, Miss Angela. <laughs> if you want one, I'll paint you one in acrylics, Angela, for a tattoo. And I'll send it up to you. Okay. I can even email it over to you and you can just print it out. That works too. All right, guys, thanks. Have a great evening. Stay safe with any weather that you might be having, and I'll see you next week.